uh, 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 4, number 88. And here we were told that a school reporter decides to randomly survey 12 students to see if they will attend the Tet Festival this year. Um, she knows 18% of students t attend Tet festivities, and we're interested in the number of students who will attend the festivities. So this is, I should say, if I want to be more specific in part A, it's the number of students who will attend the Tet festivities this year in my sample of 12. All right, so if I look at this, if, if I'm going to keep track of the number of students, right, I'm going to go up to each student and ask them, like, hey, do you plan on going to these Tet festivities? They're either going to tell me, their response back to me is yes or no, which you might think was categorical. And I, it is a categorical response. But over the course of talking to the 12 folks, I'm going to keep track of the number of yeses, right, the number of successes that we go through this. And, and even before we get into whether or not it's binomial, Right? You can see that zero of the students might say they want to go, two, three, four, all the way up to 12. So if I was going to make a table, a PDF, you can start to see I'd have a pretty long table right? because I'd have to do zero, one, two, all the way up to 12. So it would take me a really long time to go ahead and do that. So again, because this, if I look at this, this variable is discrete numerical. And if I think about making a table... A PDF and it's that long, it might have been binomial. So let's go check. I did have a fixed number of students I was going to talk to. I could say a success was attending festivities. I could say that the outcomes from the trials are independent of one another because we're talking to 12 students at random, right? And ooh, why did that eraser happen? All right, and I could say that the probability of success is 18% because based on past years, this reporter is saying she knows that 18% of students go to the Tet festivities. So since I can say yes to all of this, I actually get to say, hey, this thing is binomially distributed. It's, I've got 12 folks in my sample. Probability of success each time out is 0.18. The next thing I get asked is how many students do you expect to attend the festivities and when you hear expect right that's another word for mean or average right we've got three vocab terms that mean the same thing and if you look at that giant trait table that i gave you in our first column right it had oops it had discrete numerical variables i'll do it here i might sneeze in a sec then the next one down we had binomials Right, and then we go to uniform. Oh, I'm definitely going to sneeze. Hold up. Excuse me. All right, uniform, and then we had standard normal, right? So that giant trait table, and a couple rows down, it'll say mean, right? And the mean formula here for binomials is always n times p, so that's what you see me doing here. So in this case, I'm going to talk to 12 students. There's about 18% who are going to go. So if I talk to a sample of 12, I think on average... 2.16 students are going to go to the festivities. Now, admittedly, 2.16 students can't go. It would either be two or three. But over the long haul, if you kept talking to a sample after sample after sample, on average, about 2.16 of those students would go. Now, part E uses the phrase, it says, find the probability, right? I see that buzzword, probability. And then the other phrase we see is, at most four students attend. All right, and when you hear at most, that's going to go with the symbol less than or equal to. So it's always counterintuitive. And I think when you hear most, you think more, but it's actually less than or equal to. If I wanted another phrasing, instead of at most four, I could have also said four or fewer. But either way, you need to get to that less than or equal to symbol over here. So yay, there's a less than or equal to because I have a button for that on my calculator. I have binomial CDF. So I do N, P, K, and there it is, 0.951, okay? Now, on the flip of that in part F, it said find the probability that more than two students will attend. So if I want the probability and I want to go strictly more than two, that's going to say that I want to be strictly greater than two, right? I don't want to even, I don't want to greater than or equal to here. It's just strictly greater than. Now, let me fill out my PDF just a little bit more so we can see what's happening here. So if I wanted to pick numbers, if I want x greater than two, I don't want zero, 
I don't want one. I don't want two because two is not greater than two, but I do want three, four, five, all the way up to 12, right? That's what I want. I basically want three or more. So what I want to make sure here that we're seeing is if you hear more than two, another way of saying that is three or more, all right? So I've got a greater than or equal to symbol here. I do not have a button for that. I have to use the complement rule. So if I'm going to go use the complement rule, if I want three or more, if I want all of these numbers, then quite literally, I do not want two on down. So that's why you see me using the complement rule, binomial CDF, and now I'm plugging in two, and I get 0.370. All right, so there's number 88. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.